the clinical educators for the PEP Talk program. And my name's Dr. Susan Evans. I'm a gynecologist with the Pelvic Pain Foundation. We've been loving going into schools and running the Periods, Pain and Endometriosis program or PEP Talk. Yes, we love everyone understanding about periods and all the different ways that it can affect your body and how to understand what's happening when you do actually have a period. Michelle, would you like to tell us what a period actually is, what that blood means? Yeah, so a period, or some may know it as a menstrual period, is when we bleed from the uterus. Mm -hmm. And that happens once a month towards the end of the menstrual cycle. So throughout the month, the lining inside the uterus, which is called the endometrium, gets thicker. And then when it's time to bleed, that lining sheds away. So that blood that's coming out of the vagina yep. is actually the lining inside of the uterus. It's much easier to understand how a period happens and where it comes from when you understand the organs inside the pelvis. So all the bits that you can't see from looking at the outside, Inside the pelvis, there's the uterus, which is where the blood comes from. There's the vagina, which allows the blood to come out. There's the ovaries, one on each side, that make an egg each month. And there's the fallopian tubes, and they join the uterus to the ovary and allow an egg and a sperm to get together in people who are becoming pregnant. But there's a lot more to a woman's pelvis than the things that are on the inside. We also have organs on the outside. And Michelle, would you like to tell us all about those and how they vary between different people? Yeah. The external organs, or what you see on the outside, is called the vulva. The inside is called the vagina, and the outside, the vulva. So with the vulva, we have three holes. The first hole up the top is the urethra, mm -hmm. and that's where the urine comes out of. The one in the middle is the vagina, and that's where you bleed out of. And then the third hole at the back is called the anus, and that is where the feces or the poo comes out of. So they're the three holes down there. Mm. And then we have the uh, clitoris, which is above the urethra, and it's covered by a hood of skin. Mm. And we've got the labia, We've got the outside labia, which is called the labia majora, mm -hmm. and then the inside labia, which is called the labia minora. Um, so these are the two flaps on, the e on either side of the vulva, and they can be different shapes and sizes, and that's completely normal, isn't it, Susan? It is normal. Everyone's a bit different. And also on the vulva, we can have hair. So pubic hair down there, some people will have more, some people will have less, can be different colors and different coarse consistencies. Mm. Um, and that's also normal. So different size labia, different amounts of hair um, is also really normal. Yeah, they're all really normal things um, and different people look different, don't they? Yeah. Now we've learned about the internal and the external organs. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me why do we why do we get a period? The uterus is where the blood comes from, and that's because the lining of the uterus thickens up during the month and then bleeds away. But it's the ovary that controls when and whether you have periods. As you get older and go through puberty, the ovary matures and it will start producing eggs. The ovary, there's one on both sides of the pelvis, makes two hormones. The first hormone is estrogen and the second hormone is progesterone. And both of them affect the lining of the uterus. That's called the endometrium. So during the month, estrogen allows the lining of the uterus to gradually build up in thickness. Ovulation, which is where an egg is released from the ovary, happens two weeks before a period. During that two weeks between ovulation and the period, the ovary makes progesterone. That stabilizes the lining of the uterus and gets it ready for a period. At the end of the two weeks, the progesterone levels fall and that's the signal that the uterus has been waiting for. That's the time when it decides to have a period, shed that lining and get ready for the next month. The length of a menstrual period varies between different people and it's measured from the first day of a period until the first day of the next period. 
Now that number of days is often around 28 days, but everyone's a bit different. It could be anywhere between 21 and 35 days for each menstrual cycle. So once again, we find that everyone's a bit different and a lot of it's still okay. All right, now we know that a cycle, a menstrual cycle lasts around 28 days. Yes. But did you know that uh, people can have up to 400 periods in their, in their lifetime? That's a lot of bleeding, isn't it? That's a lot of bleeding over quite a lot of years. Yeah, it's a lot of blood, a lot of tampons and pads being used. Yes. And did you know that the, the general age of somebody starting their period is between 10 and 14, but usually around 11 or 12 is quite normal. Mm. So some of the people look, listening to us today, some of them will have already had a period and some of them might not have. Mm -hmm. um, everybody matures at their own rate. Yeah. We've talked about the physical aspects of a period, how much you bleed, where it comes from. But there's other ways that a cycle can affect people too. It can often affect the way you feel. Mm. Now, Michelle, in your time visiting students in schools, what have you worked out and what have people talked about? The different ways they might feel during the month of their menstrual cycle. There are four stages of your menstrual cycle, starting off with um, the menstrual phase, which is when you will be bleeding. Mm. So at this time, you might be feeling a bit tired or fatigued. You might feel like you're not really wanting to go out and socialize. You're just wanting to go um, inwards. Then our hormone estrogen starts to increase after we finish bleeding, leading us into the follicular phase. So this is when your energy starts to ramp up a little bit. You're feeling a little bit more social, um, and keen to get out a bit more. Once the follicular phase is finished, then we're moving into ovulation. And that gets much more exciting. That's when the ovary is releasing an egg and that process is called ovulation. At that time, you have a high level of estrogen and you often feel a bit more confident, a bit uh, happier, a bit more energetic and you might feel more like going out with your friends. Isn't that right, Michelle? I know I feel more energetic at that time of the month. Excellent. Yeah. Once we pass the hormone peak, then we come to the luteal phase, which is the second half of our cycle. This is the time when our progesterone hormone increases, and it's a time in our cycle when we usually feel a bit more relaxed and a bit more stable. But some people may not feel a change in this time of the cycle. Once the luteal phase is reaching the end, we come to the day or two before our period, before we bleed, and this can be a little bit of a tricky time uh, in our cycle. It can be a wild time, Michelle, and it's a time when it's easy to get a bit grumpy, and you might sometimes say things you don't really mean, or you get upset with people that are close to you. It's a time when sometimes it's worthwhile just keeping those irritations to yourself for a day or two, and you'll feel much happier then. The day before a period is not a great day to make big decisions. So then we start bleeding mm. and then that goes into our menstrual phase again. So we've done that whole, you know, roughly 28 mm. day cycle and you can feel very different at different parts of your cycle. And the whole cycle starts again. Yeah. Mm. 400 times in oh. your lifetime. <laughs> wow. Michelle, what can students do if they're interested in tracking their cycle and maybe working out those different phases of the menstrual cycle for themselves? Yeah, a really great easy thing you can do is download a period tracker app onto your phone. Hmm. Most of them are free in the app store and then you can start to input your information into it. So on day one you bleed, you can put that in. Yes. You can also put in, if you're experiencing any type of pain on any day, as well as different moods and things like that. So if you do that every month, you'll start to understand your body a bit mm. better, your menstrual cycle. Mm. And if you do need to go to a doctor and take that information to them, mm. it's right there on your phone with you. Yes, and your um, doctor will really appreciate that you know things like how many days you bleed for and how long your menstrual cycle is. They'll really appreciate that extra bit of information. Periods are a natural part of life. And the more you know about them, the more you'll be able to make good decisions for your own health in the future. 
That'll give you the confidence to understand when your body's working well and when there are problems that you have that you should talk to a health professional about. We talk more about that in the Periods, Pain and Endometriosis Pep Talk program that's coming to your school soon. Michelle, would you like to tell us more about what students might expect from Pep Talk when it comes to their school? Myself or one of the other clinical educators will be coming into your school soon. We'll be spending a really great fun hour with you talking about all these topics, more specifically period pain, pelvic pain mm. and endometriosis. So if any questions have popped into your head today, uh, note them down so that you can speak to one of your educators about you know, these things. We'll also hang around after the session if you would like to talk one-to-one -one with us about any other issues that um, you know, are arising for you. We're really looking forward to coming out to your school and um, chatting to you about periods, pain and endometriosis. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.